the office. So I'm tired of having to secure my data on the heap. So I decided to implement my own version of malloc with canaries. It's 10 times more secure and only 100 times slower. And the hint is the heap check function contains a lot of useful debugging info. See if you can get it to work. All right, so I'm going to begin with a bunch of reverse engineering that I did. Here is the main method. And it looks like there's an array of 10 employees. It gets initialized to null here. Then they have this menu choice menu that uh, function that prints out the menu, zeros exit, add employee, remove employee, list employees, get access token. Um, looks like they've got like a built-in stack canary, so I call that method canary death. And you can see that everywhere there's a 10. I've replaced a bunch of these with new lines. All right, so they, they get the menu choice and If they pick it two, you delete an employee, it asks for an employee number. There's this free employee. That's going to free both the email address, which is an offset 16, and then the employee themselves. Then there's this display employee, and then display employee will print out their name, email, salary, building number, phone number. This is kind of useful here because what we see is that at offset 4, so 16 bytes, is where the email address is stored. The salary is at offset 20. The billing is at offset 36. So that's going to be important later. And then the phone number is actually 6 bytes in. Okay, so here we have this get token method, which takes in an employee. Again, there's that new line. So if the employee's name is admin, it will print out the flag for us. So our goal is going to be to get some employee to have the name admin. When we go to add an employee, it won't let us add more than 10 employees. We have this add employee method. Unfortunately, it's going to check and it's not going to let us specify admin. We can specify an email address if we want, and then it mallocs that second field. Then interestingly, this building, we can specify whether or not we want to put in a building. That's going to be important later. And so that building was at offset 36, which we talked about, and that's important. And we got this malloc. So malloc, there's allocating pages with canaries. There's this heap check method. It's always called with zero. If you look at heap check, you'll see that that flag is, if it's a one, it has a bunch of debug printing. So that can be super handy. And that's, that's most of the reverse engineering that we've done. So now what we'll look at is like, okay, let's try to run this program and get some interesting information from that heap. So we saw the mymalloc heap check. So this heap check method, we'll go there and heap check. We got called here in my malloc, and it has that push of zero. So if we BBI into the office, and then I'm going to search for these bytes. So I looked at these bytes here, that push zero heap check is 6A, 6A00. B eight four two zero three zero zero eight three C four ten. Now let's try that again. Six A B eight four two zero three zero zero eight three. What is going on here?
Oh yeah, I forgot I need to capitalize this. Okay, so 6a, 0, 0, e842, 03, 0, 0, 0. All right, so there are those bytes, and you can see that they fall. And I can just come over here and change this to a 1. And then I can look for the next one down here. So backslash 6a through a00, b84502, 0000. I'm going to change that to a 1. I can write this as like the office act. All right, so now that I have the office hacked, I can run GDB on that. And let's set a breakpoint in displaying the menu. That looks like a good thing. So that's here. So let's set a breakpoint at 804.87e6. All right, so I'm at my breakpoint. You'll see that it's going to print the menu. Go ahead and hit continue. So I'm going to add an employee. Here it's printing out the canary. You can see some heap addresses. I'll just fill in and after it's allocated I have a size 52 thing here. So let's do like x16 x there. So we see that there's the size. So you know that's a little early. What I want is I want to print the heap bottom. Okay, so there's my canary, I think. There's my size. There's the size of the previous block. Here's that name that was zero and so forth. And So that's useful. Size so the previous is zero. We put a second one of these in. Now we're going to have two of these 52 blocks. I'll make the name a little bit more interesting. So now we can look here. So my canary, size, previous size, you see the zeros I put in. Now if we look at the next one that follows it, right, so there's the canary again, size, previous size, there's there the A's that I put in. Okay, so, so that's useful to us. Now, we also can see by the way this thing allocates. Let's go ahead and delete employee zero. And we can look at the heap. Actually, go ahead and do an add so we can see the heap. So we have that size 52 block that wasn't allocated and it reallocates it. So our goal here. Is going to be we're actually going to create something of size 36 because remember that building number was at 36 offset and then we'll end up with like a 52 and a 36 and then when I deallocate these this, these blocks will still be there when we allocate two ones without email addresses this 52 will be over the old 36. And since that old 36 had a canary at the end, the building number will contain the 
canary. So let's just quit and do that again so you can get the idea. So break 0x8, and it's 7b6. Okay, so I'm going to add an employee uh, with an email address that is 28 long, because we need to have the extra space. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 8. All right, so there's my 36 chunk. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And so there it is. Now I'm going to delete that person. Now when I add, it's going to allocate this again, that same block. And I add again, the second block here is where that 36 was the first time. So when I list the employees, this is my canary. You can see that from here, right? That's my canary. It ended up in the building number because I aligned those allocations exactly the same. Okay, so once I have the canary, now things get pretty easy. So I can just look at making that first employee I deallocate them I put it back and then I'm going to overwrite the second employee by doing an overflow in the phone numbers where we see in the add employee, they did a nice job here, right? So they scan for 15 character string, they scan for 127 character string. When they do the phone number though, they just do a percent S. This is unguarded. I can overflow, it's at position 24. So I just overflow enough to get me to the end of the block. I overwrite the canary, I overwrite the two size fields, and I replace with admin. So I've got this in a Python program. I create a little subroutine for adding an employee. So it sends the one. It can send an email or a phone number as it needs. We make an email 28 long, um, so that made that block of size 36. And then when that got reused, the canary that follows ends up in the building field. So we add that employee with an email that's 28 characters long. We delete them. We add two employees. We get the list. And the building number of the second employee is the canary. We remove the first employee, employee zero. Then we're going to allocate that space again with the canary. 28 plus 24 gets me to the end of the block. That's 52. I stick the canary. 53 and 53, so the size is 52. The previous size is 52. That last bit tells you whether or not the previous is allocated. And we have admin. So we have stuck admin in the second field. We list them. We'll see admin in the second field. And so it's got the canary. There's admin in the second field. We can get the access token of employee one. And there is our flag.